Thomas Aquinas' On Being in Essence, chapters 4 through 5. Before going into the content of these two chapters, let's first give a quick overview of the content of On Being in Essence, or in Latin, De Ente et Essentia, as a whole work. Chapter 1 of this work discusses essence, or essentia, in relation to being, or ends. Chapters 2 through 3 of this work discuss essence as found in composite substances. Chapter 2, in particular, went into the, what is the essence of a composite substance. Chapter 3, in contrast, discussed how the essence of a composite substance relates to the logical intentions, genus, species, and difference. Chapters 4 through 5, however, look at the essence of simple substances. Chapter 4 looks at how essence is found in the human soul and the intelligences and in God. Chapter 5 compares how essence is found in composite substances, simple created substances, and God. Chapter 6 will look at how essence is found not in substances, but in accidents. As important background for chapters 4 through 5, it's important to keep in mind that there are three things that St. Thomas will refer to as substances by analogy. The first and most obvious kind is the composite substance, which can also be called a material or corporeal substance. These are made out of both matter and form. Examples of this are rocks, trees, dogs, and humans. The second kind of substance is the created simple substance. This includes the human soul and the intelligences. St. Thomas uses the word intelligences to refer to angels or demons. He uses the word intelligence because that is the common word of philosophers. In his theological works, he will use the word angels instead of the intelligences. But since the philosophers especially the pagan philosophers and the Muslim philosophers and Jewish philosophers, use the word intelligences, and since this is a philosophical work and not a theological work, he uses the word intelligences and not angels. In his theological works, he, use, he reverses his vocabulary. It's also important to note that sometimes the word angel includes both angels and demons, and sometimes the word angel is contrasted with demons, so that angel means those intelligences which have not committed sins, whereas demons refers to those intelligences which have committed sins. In any case, when you read the word intelligence, just think of angels. The third kind of substance is the uncreated simple substance. St. Thomas refers to this as the first cause. Eventually, he will reveal that the first cause is God. Although we depict God, the intelligences, and the human soul as if they were bodies or miniature humans in some medieval depictions, this is a purely metaphorical depiction. St. Thomas and all philosophers at the time of St. Thomas and long before were well aware that angels and human and the human soul, are not bodies. In other words, they aren't things that take up space or can be pointed to. They're invisible precisely because they don't have quantitative dimensions. It's also important, before going into chapters 4 through 5 of Dante et Essentia, to recognize that the word spirit and the word soul do not mean the same thing. A soul is defined as the first principle of life in a living body. Spirit, in contrast, is defined as an immaterial substance. Substantial forms of inanimate things are not souls. They are the first principle of formal principle for whatever the thing that they are a principle of is. Nevertheless, they are not the first principle of life in a living body, since they are not in a living body, but in an inanimate body. In contrast, the substantial forms of irrational animals like dogs and lions and the substantial forms of plants are souls. That's because these forms are that in virtue of which living bodies such as dogs, lions, and trees are living bodies and do living things. 
Notice that the word substantial form covers a broader category of things than the word soul. Nevertheless, all souls are substantial forms. Examples of spirit are God and the intelligences, or angels. Notice that the intelligences and God are not souls. That's because these are not the forms of living bodies. Rather, they are their own independent substances. The only thing that is both a spirit and a soul is the substantial form of a human. This is both the first principle of life in the living human body, as well as its own Im independent immaterial substance. That's evident from the fact that humans have two kinds of operations, operations that depend on the body for their subject and those that don't. For instance, the operations of nutrition, growth, and seeing depend on the body as, as their subject. For instance, we can't see without the corporeal organ of eyes, and we can't uh, perform the operations of nutrition and growth without other corporeal organs. On the other hand, the act of understanding or the act of free will does not depend on the body, but on the soul alone as its subject. St. Thomas will sometimes use the word the soul simply to refer to the human soul. If he doesn't qualify the word soul with irrational or animal soul, it's very likely he's talking about the human soul. If St. Thomas ever says that the soul is a substance, or that the soul is a simple substance especially, he's definitely talking about the human soul and not irrational animal souls or plant souls or souls in general. So, souls are not all substances, though one kind of soul is a substance, namely the human soul. Likewise, immaterial substances are rarely souls, but in one case, immaterial substances are souls, namely the human soul. St. Thomas begins chapter 4 of De Ante et Essentia by bringing up the question of whether God is the only immaterial being. This question arises because of the earlier philosopher Avicebron, or in Arabic, Ibn Gabiral. He lived from 1021 to 1070 AD. He was a Jewish philosopher who was born in Malaga in modern-day Spain. Avicebron argued that God is form without matter, but that the intelligences in the human soul are composite substances of matter and form. St. Thomas, in contrast, says that Avicebron was totally wrong. Neither God, nor the intelligences, nor the human soul has matter in its essence. St. Thomas gives the following proof for the immateriality of intellectual substances, such as the human soul, the intelligences, and God. No form is actually intelligible unless it is separate from matter and its conditions. The only thing that can make a form that is naturally in matter to be separate from matter is something already separate from matter. That's because nothing can give what it doesn't already have. Thus, the only thing that can make a form naturally in matter to be actually intelligible is the, a form already separate from matter. But intellectual substances are, by definition, things that can make a form naturally in matter to be actually intelligible. Thus, intellectual substances are already actually separate from matter. What this means is that all intellectual substances are forms without matter in their essence. God does not have matter in his essence. The intelligences, or angels, do not have matter in their essence. This includes both the good angels and the demons. Likewise, the human soul does not have matter in its essence, but is a form alone. St. Thomas then raises an objection. He himself does not agree with this objection, but he cites it in order to disprove it. The object objection goes as follows. 
It is not matter that prevents a thing from being actually intelligible, but corporeal matter, that is a certain kind of matter, the kind of matter that has dimensions, that is, that has accidents in the genus quantity. St. Thomas replies to this objection as follows. If it is corporeal matter only that prevents intelligibility and not matter in general, then what pr principally impedes intelligibility is the accidental form of corporeity, that is, quantity. This would be the accidental form in virtue of which corporeal matter differs from any other kind of matter. But if what principally impedes intelligibility is the accidental form of corporeity, then quantity will be unintelligible even if separated from matter. But we can understand quantity when we abstract it from matter. This is precisely what mathematicians do. Therefore, it is not the case that only corporeal matter prevents intelli intelligibility. Rather, all matter prevents intelligibility. Does this mean that the angels and the soul are pure act? Matter is potency and form is act. So it seems that everything that lacks matter is pure act. But St. Thomas will deny this line of reasoning. In fact, God is the only thing for St. Thomas that is pure act. Angels and the soul are not pure act. In angels and the soul, there is a different composition besides the composition of matter and form. Yet this other composition is also a composition of potency and act. It is a composition of what St. Thomas will call form and existence, or essay. The primary difference between composite substances, such as humans, dogs, trees, and rocks, and simple substances, such as the archangel Gabriel and the fallen angels like Lucifer or Satan, is that composite substances are substances composed out of matter and form, whereas simple substances are substances that are form alone without matter. Because of this principal difference between these two kinds of substances, there are two other differences mentioned by St. Thomas. The first is that composite substances can be signified in one of two ways, either as a whole or ut totem, so as to include designated matter indeterminately, or they can be signified as a part, ut pars, so as to exclude designated matter. For instance, man signifies Socrates as a whole. It includes Socrates' designated matter implicitly or indeterminately. In contrast, humanity only signifies Socrates' essence, but positively excludes his designated matter. Thus, man is predicable of Socrates, since it implicitly signifies the whole of Socrates, whereas humanity is not predicable of Socrates, because it doesn't signify the whole of Socrates, but only a part of him, namely his essence, excluding another part of him, namely his designated matter. In contrast to composite substances, simple substances can only be signified as a whole, or ut totem. Thus, the essence of a simple substance, such as Gabriel, is predicable of the individual simple substance, no matter what. The second difference between composite and simple substances is that composite substances can have many individuals in the same species in virtue of the diversity of designated matter, for instance, that flesh and this flesh. In contrast, individual angels only are diversified by their species. They are never diversified by designated matter because they don't have any matter to be designated. So every angel belongs to its own species. Although many angels are in the same genus, no two angels belong to the same species. After discussing the essence of the intelligences, St. Thomas next discusses the essence of God, or the first cause. He does so beginning with a distinction between essence on the one hand and esse, or existence, on the other. This passage is extremely controversial, and perhaps one of the most controversial things in all of St. Thomas's works. So, for this video, we're just going to go over a superficial or standard understanding of the text, 
we won't get into all the details. St. Thomas makes the following argument. Whatever is outside the concept, or intellectus, of essence is not part of essence, but enters into composition with it. But existence, or esse, is outside the concept of essence. Therefore, existence, or esse, is not part of the essence, but enters into composition with it. This is a valid Barbara form of syllogism. St. Thomas proves the minor premise by pointing out that we can know what a phoenix is or what a man is without knowing whether or not a phoenix or a man exists. Therefore, it is clear that existence is something other than essence or quiddity unless perhaps there is something whose quiddity is its very own existence. What St. Thomas means by this is that the conclusion of this syllogism only follows if the second premise is true, but is it possible that there is something for which the second premise is not true? That is, something for which existence is not outside the concept of that thing? As we'll see, St. Thomas thinks that God is an example of something, and the only example of something, for which existence is not outside the concept of essence. As we saw in the last slide, although St. Thomas seems to say initially that essence and essay are always distinct from one another, after drawing this conclusion, he leaves open a caveat. He says that there might be such a thing in which essence and essay are identical. The next step for St. Thomas is to argue that if there is such a thing whose essay is its essence or quiddity, then that thing must be unique. In other words, there can't be multiple of it. He argues for this as follows. If there are a plurality of existences, or essay, then this is because either A, essay is diversified into species as a genus by added differences, or B, essay is diversified into many individuals by being received in diverse designated matter, or c, one essay is absolute and subsistent, whereas the others have essay not essentially, but by participation. St. Thomas doesn't think a is possible at all, because then the thing that is its essay would not be essay only, but essay plus some other form. Likewise, he doesn't think b is possible, because then the thing that is essay would not be subsistent essay, but would merely have essay by participation. Then St. Thomas gives an implied premise. There are many existences, or essay, that is, in God, in angels, and in material creatures. From this implied premise, St. Thomas draws a conclusion. Therefore, the reason there are many existences, or essay, is because one essay is absolute and subsistent, whereas the other things have essay not essentially, but by participation. If all creatures have essay by participation as a quasi-accident, then how does this essay come to pertain to those creatures, or how does it come to belong to them? Well, St. Thomas says that whatever pertains to a thing without being part of its essence is caused either A, by the principles of the thing's nature, or by some extrinsic principle, that is, some external agent or efficient cause. But existence pertains to creatures, such as the existence of an angel or the existence of a human. Thus, existence in creatures is caused either A, by the principles of that creature's nature, or B, by some extrinsic principle. Existence in creatures cannot be caused by the principles of that creature's own nature. After all, nothing can cause itself to exist. That would be contradictory. Thus, existence in creatures is caused by some extrinsic principle. This cause of essay is that thing, the essence of which is its own essay. Which thing does not participate essay as some accident, but has essay essentially? 
In other words, the cause of essay or existence in creatures is precisely that one thing whose essence is its own existence. St. Thomas closes this argument with this important statement, quote, It is clear, therefore, that the intelligences, i.e. the angels, are form and existence, that is, essay, and have existence from the first being, which is existence alone, and this is the first cause, which is God. Many interpreters of St. Thomas, although not all, interpret this passage as being one of St. Thomas's first arguments for the existence of God. As we saw previously, St. Thomas denies that the intelligences are composed out of matter and form, though matter and form relate to each other as potency and act. So you might think that for St. Thomas the intelligences are pure act, since they're form alone, and form is an act. But St. Thomas denies this conclusion, and instead says that God alone is pure act. The intelligences, which are creatures, are also composed out of potency and act, although they're not composed out of matter and form. He argues for this as follows. Everything that is received relates to that which receives it as act to potency. But existence, or essay, is received by all creatures. Thus, existence relates to that which receives it, i.e. the creatures, as act to potency. The essence of an angel relates to the existence, or essay, of the angel, as that which exists, or id quod est, relates to that by which it is, or id quo est in Latin. In other words, existence is that by which the essence of an angel, which is the angel itself, exists. So, the existence of an angel is like a quasi-act or and a quasi-accident for the essence of the angel. It's something added over and above the essence of the angel, which explains why the essence of the angel is. Created spirits differ from each other by their grade of potency and act. The human soul is the lowest of the created spirits because it has no actual knowledge by nature, but is in pure potency with respect to knowledge. In chapter 5 of De Ante et Essentia, St. Thomas summarizes all that has gone before and draws conclusions. He compares the essence of composite substances to that of created simple substances and the one uncreated simple substance, God. St. Thomas starts with the essence of God. As we've seen, God's essence, or quiddity, is his existence, or essay. St. Thomas makes three points about this fact. First is that it follows from this fact that God is neither in a genus nor in a species. That's because existence is diverse in diverse things. That is, the existence of diverse things is diverse. But genera and species are precisely th those things which are the same in diverse things. Thus, if quiddity is essay, or if a thing's essence is its existence, then uh, that thing obviously cannot be in a genus or in a species. The second point St. Thomas makes about God's essence is that God's existence, or essay, is not the same thing as the common concept of essay. That is, the concept of essay we apply to creatures that happen to exist, such as angels or trees or rocks. Common existence or universal existence is that by which everything in the created world formally is. The common notion of existence neither includes nor excludes additional formal determinations. God's existence is distinct from common essay by excluding additional formal determinations. God is nothing except his own essay, or existence. Nevertheless, God does have other perfections besides the perfection of simply existing. Although God is essay without addition, he does have other perfections such as knowledge and will. In God, all perfections are identical to his essay. 
So for instance, God is good and all-knowing, but all-knowing and good and God refer to God's own existence. In contrast, in humans, if we say a human knows something and that he's good, we're referring to two distinct accidents. Knowledge is a certain accident, and virtue, or that in virtue of which we're called good, is another accident. But in God, goodness and knowledge are the same thing, namely God's own existence. After discussing essence as found in God, St. Thomas discusses essence as found in the created intellectual substances, such as the human soul and the angels. St. Thomas begins by using an obscure formula which he takes from earlier philosophers. According to this formula, the intelligences are finite with respect to what is above them, but infinite with respect to what is below. What this means is that in the intelligence, in virtue of its nature, limits or determines the sort of existence it will receive from above, that is, from God. In this sense, the intelligence is finite with respect to what is above, namely God, who is infinite. On the other hand, the intelligence is, in a sense, infinite. That's because, compared to corporeal substances, it is quite distinct. A corporeal substance is only one member of a species, of a universal. On the other hand, the intelligence wholly exhausts his own species. The species is not limited by any signate matter, so that it becomes one individual among many. But instead, each individual wholly exhausts its own species. So, each individual intelligence belongs to its own species. In angels, there is only one individual per species. But, the important thing to note is that the human soul is an important exception to the rule about intellectual substances. The human soul is itself an intellectual substance just like the angels, but there are many individual souls in the same species, human soul. That's obvious because all humans have a human soul, and so there are many individual human souls. This is possible in virtue of the soul's organic and sentient parts or powers. The human soul, because of these parts or powers, is naturally joined to a body. But bodies are precisely the sorts of things which multiply individuals within a species. Thus, the species human soul is multiplied in diverse individuals by union with designated matter, just as the species man is multiplied in designated matter. Unlike God, created intelligences are in a genus. So although the intellectual substances, excepting the human soul, are not multiplied within a species, they are multiplied within a genus. The genus of an intellectual substance is taken from what pertains to the immateriality of the substance. The specific difference is taken from the degree of act or potency in the substance. For instance, higher intellectual substances, that is, the higher angels, will be more actual and less potential. In contrast, at the bottom of the rung of intellectual substances is the human soul. The human soul is so low down that it is pure potency with respect to actual knowledge, at least at the start, and only over the course of someone's life do they start to gain actual knowledge. In contrast, angels are created already knowing a great deal. After discussing essence as found in intellectual substances, St. Thomas discusses essence in composite substances. Composite substances are finite both with respect to what is above, that is, God who gives existence, as well as with respect to below. In other words, S.A. is received from above and limited by the corporeal substance's nature, just as in angels, S.A. is received from above and limited by the angelic nature. 
but unlike angels, the nature or species of a, comport of a corporeal substance is received and limited by diverse parts of matter, that is, diverse signate matter. There can be multiple individuals within the same corporeal species. These individuals are diversified by designated matter. This was already explained in Chapter 2 of On Being in Essence. In a